I have on my refrigerator the most depressing piece of paper. It stays there, fastened by four magnets, one on each corner, as if to say, Yes, I want you and the ideas you represent in my life, but... Don't go flapping around drawing attention to yourself every time I walk by. This piece of paper is called... Five Tasks of Grief. It arrived in a flurry of mailings from the hospice that helped me care for my mother during her last three weeks of life. And while it took me a couple of days to realize it, all this mail arrived right at the three-month anniversary of my mother's death. So maybe this was some sort of bereavement check-in time. Which makes sense. Because the first morning that this mail started to arrive, I'd been awakened by the sound of my deceased mother's voice calling my name in a half-awake dream. I spent the first hour of that day sobbing in my bed, really unable, or unwilling really, to move. You never know when these things are gonna hit you, but I guess those hospice people do, because this piece of paper arrived just in time. The page is arranged into two neat columns, one titled Tasks of Grief, and the other Goals for Healthy Bereavement. I should stop here and mention how badly I'd like to mock this piece of paper with its airy-fairy language and guidance toward healing, but the truth is, this piece of paper kicks my ass every time I look at it. I mean, it fucking stings. So right when I want to crack a joke, my throat clenches up. The sides of my mouth force themselves down, my lip quivers, and it's to the couch, or the floor, or whatever is most convenient for a good sit-down with my feelings. Now, I'm the type of person who avoids these so-called emotions at all costs, though, as a child, my mother often reminded me that I was different and that I was more sensitive than the other kids. While that may have been her euphemism for, you will suck many cocks in your life, at the time it made me feel like she got me in a way that no one else did. The call came on a Sunday night. It was really a text message from my brother. Even though all it said was, Check your email. I knew. This is it. June 20th, 2012, what made me grateful. We made it to Arizona today. Mom wouldn't answer the door, so my sister climbed the short fence and entered the apartment through the unlocked sliding door. Seeing my mother's skeletal silhouette in the doorway to her bedroom was shocking. She's not well, not well at all, but I'm so happy we're here for her. June 21st, 2012. 
My brother arrived yesterday. His presence helped us over the hump of asking our mom some serious questions and getting all of us honest about what is really going on. She has a massive tumor on her lung. Huge was the word we read on the radiology report that lay abandoned on her kitchen table. The three of us sat in her room and told her that we wanted nothing but to help her in exactly the way she wanted to be helped. Task number one, to accept the reality of the loss. Assist loved one with unfinished business and saying goodbye before death. Dressing the body for burial, attending the funeral, visiting the grave site. June 23rd, 2012. I'm grateful for getting hospice set up for mom and how kind her doctor's assistant was with my brother and me. I've decided to stay as long as I can in hopes that she can die at home in her own bed. I'm grateful for being in the moment as best I can. June 24th, 2012. I'm grateful for talking to mom about what she wants us to do with her stuff when she's gone. This opened up the conversation about what she wants us to do with her body. The talk was so hard, but my tears gave her the chance to mother me once more. I'm so thankful for being on the other side of this conversation. It's such a relief to be perfectly current and not have to avoid saying what we both know to be true. She is dying. Task number two, to experience the pain of the loss, allowing sad feelings, crying, allowing angry feelings, talking and writing, telling the story, exploring guilty feelings. June 28th, 2012. Mom had me show her best friend Bonnie each item in the closet to see if she wanted any of her clothes. Under ordinary circumstances, this would have annoyed the crap out of me, but yesterday, I was so happy and touched to be a part of this bittersweet exchange between my mom and her best friend. I'm grateful for walking Bonnie back to her apartment with her bounty of clothes from my mom. She was so sad and started crying when I hugged her goodbye. A 40-year-old man and a 60-some-odd-year-old woman crying in each other's arms. Everything is so sad right now, but I'm still happy to be present. Task number three, to adjust to an environment in which the deceased is missing. In time to dispose of the belongings of the deceased, develop new skills and coping strategies. July 3rd, 2012. I'm grateful for seeing mom decline further. This feels like a terrible thing to say I'm grateful for, but I know she is so unhappy living this way, and her steady decline means that she might have some relief sooner rather than later. I'm grateful for my friend Jeannie's advice to call hospice last night. I was freaking out, afraid I'd given mom too much morphine. The on-call nurse said, at this point, there are no mistakes. We just want her to be as comfortable as possible until it's time for her to go. Task number four, to integrate the meaning of the loss into one's life. Spiritual and philosophical discussions, spiritual and philosophical readings, reflection, prayer, meditation, life review, writing. July 4th, 2012. I'm grateful for waking up in the middle of the night to give medicine to mom and how it reminds me of the countless times she did the same for me. I don't want to get all Elton John on you guys, but that's some circle of life shit right there. I'm grateful for how much my mom's nurse loves her. I'm grateful for how much my mom's friends love her. July 10th, 2012. My mom has entered the final stage of life. 
the hospice nurse, Erica, described it as a beautiful part of the process where she has one foot in each side. It was so interesting hearing her talk about death as a beautiful process, and it helped me to realize that I feel the same way. As hard as it is for us here on the human side of things to say goodbye, I truly believe that my mom is going to be in a really cool new phase of her spirit's existence. My friend Aaron and I have changed the term death rattle to heavenly huffs. Much nicer, right? Task number five, to withdraw emotional energy and reinvest it in another relationship, in time to begin attending social functions, to be able to say, there are other people to be loved, and that doesn't mean I love the blank any less. July 11th, 2012. My sweet mom passed away last night at 7.15. She went so peacefully and she seemed to be comfortable in her last couple of days. I'm so happy she got to leave this world in exactly the way she wanted to. That's all for today. people to be loved. There are other people to be loved. And that doesn't mean I love blank any less. <laughs>